Hi, I'm going to show you how to do a rolling average in Power BI using some DAX formulas. We're going to use the functions calculate, sum, distinct count, and dates in period, which is going to help us set that, that period, which is going to be our rolling average. Let's take a quick look at the formula first. So I have, my, I have a 28-day and a 7-day rolling average. And... If we look at this formula, we're using the calculate to change the context of the data that we're looking at, and we're using dates and period plus last date. So I'm going to take you through how to do this in a little bit cleaner way using variables. And I'll put both ways down for you to look at in the description. Okay, let's do a rolling average. So we're going to, so we're going to go over and create a new measure. Now that we have our new measure, we're going to do a 30-day rolling average. And let's call it 30-day rolling average equals. Now, what I want to do is use variables for this to make our calculations uh, a little bit cleaner and easier to read. Uh, so first, I'm going to hit Alt-Enter to get to a next row. And I'm going to use... VAR to signal variable and now we need two parts of this we need to sum up what we want and then we're going to divide it by the number of dates in our period so first let's use the sum of what we're looking at in the particular period that we're interested in and we're looking at a 30-day rolling average so I'm going to use variable and I'm going to call this sum in period and then I'm going to equal that we're going to use the calculate function and I'm going to put this all in one line because it's not that long and I'm going to do sum of sessions because we're looking at Google Analytics data so I'm going to choose sessions and then now we're going to use a filter part of the calculate function and we're going to use dates in period dates and period function and then we can look at what that entails that gives us a date to specify wh where we're looking at the start date number of intervals and the actual interval type so let's do this one by one we're using date the date column our start date is going to be the last date because we're doing that 30 date 30 day average so we're going to use last date and then we're going to do the number of intervals from that last date is going to be 30 because we're doing a 30 date rolling average and then we're going to be doing day so that's the first part of our formula that gives us the sum over that period of 30 days now we need to divide that by the number of dates counted in that period so I'm going to create another variable I'm going to hit alt enter and I'm going to call that variable oh and I'm missing a parentheses I'm gonna call this days in period now this this part is gonna look almost exactly like what's above we're just gonna be using distinct count of days so you're gonna do calculate distinct count what do we want to count we want to count the date then we're going to do dates and period again. Date, comma, start date, last date, date, day. Okay, now we have both our parts of our formula. Now we want to divide the two. So I'm going to hit Alt Enter and we have our two variables. I'm going to hit Return to exit out of that variable part. And what do I want to return? I want to re return the sum in the period divided by the days in the period. So we go down, Alt Enter, sum in period. There's my variable divided by date in period. Dates in period. There we go now we have our function so let me just remove these two and 
leave that. So now I'm going to remove the 7 day and the 28 day. And now we just have our data. And I'm going to bring in that 30 day rolling average. And there you go. There's your 30 day rolling average. You can change this to anything you want. And what would be amazing is if you can make this dynamic. So let's do that. And we can do that with what if. So if I go over to our modeling, we can do a what if parameter. So I'm going to hit new parameter. And I'm going to say, OK, here's my parameter. I'm going to leave it as a whole number because what I want to do is change the, the number of days and make it dynamic. And I'm going to say the minimum is 7 for 7 days. And the maximum is, let's say, 28. And I'm going to go by increments of 7 for a week. And we're going to make the default 7. So now I have a new parameter there. And watch what happens. It's going to create a virtual table that says parameter. And then we're going to have our number there. And so now let's go back to our formula our 30 day rolling average and what we can do instead of having this 30 days we can actually make it variable by adding our parameter value and then i'm going to take this 30 day parameter value and then I'm going to hit enter close that function off and we should now it's defaulted to a seven day rolling average but wait now we can change this dynamically by bringing in our parameter value here and now we know that default is set at 7, but watch this. We go in increments of 7. Now we have a 14-day rolling average. Go in one more increment. Now you have a 21-day rolling average. And lastly, we have a 28-day rolling average. That is the great thing about parameters and Power BI. I really hope this helps you make a dynamic changing average uh, that you can show off and add insight to your dashboards. Thank you.